Welcome. So this question says uh, a uniform 20 kilogram, 8 meter long ladder leans against a smooth wall. The ladder has a point, is on the point of slipping. Uh, the ladder makes an angle of 60 degrees with the floor. And what is the force between the ladder and the rough floor? So let's draw this out kind of carefully. So here's my ladder. And this is 60 degrees. And of course we have it's a uniform ladder. So we can take the weight of the ladder. And because it's 20 kilograms mg, the mass times the acceleration, the times the gravitational field strength gives me 200 newtons. So there's one force I've got to take into account. Um, there are some other forces that are not mentioned. Um, there's the normal force with which the wall pushes against the ladder. If the wall wasn't there pushing, the ladder would roll over, would, would, would rotate over. So we'll call this Fn1. There's no friction force on the wall because it says that it's a, a, a smooth wall and that's kind of code for saying no friction. And then here we have, uh, well there's going to be a normal force upwards, we'll call it Fn2 and that is the floor pushing against the underside of the ladder. If that wasn't there then the ladder would just accelerate downwards. Um, now there is a frictional force stopping the end of the ladder from just sliding across the floor and this is actually the force that I want. I'm going to make it slightly bigger. This is FF and to keep our terminology right we'll call it FF2. There's no FF1 but we'll call it an FF2. There's no other forces on this on this ladder. There's nobody climbing the ladder. It's just the way it is. Um, now, um, I want to solve this. I want to find, it says, what is the force of friction between the ladder and the floor? And I have two tools in my toolbox. The first says the sum of the forces along any axis equals zero, because this is clearly in static equilibrium. And the other is the sum of the torques around any turning axis equals zero. Um, so let's start off and look at the sum of the forces. Well, why don't we say the sum of the forces horizontally? Well, Fn2 is vertical, so that's got no component horizontally, and the 200 newtons weight is vertical, so that has no component horizontally. So using this first expression, I can simply say that, well, Fn1 added to minus FF2 equals zero. And by itself, I don't know either one of them. <laughs> so it doesn't really help me. Um, so the next thing I'm going to try is I'm going to look at my torques, the second condition for equilibrium. And for this, I need to try to ignore Fn1. I want to try to ignore Fn1. So if I put my turning axis somewhere in line with Fn1, although Fn1 still exists, it has no, it causes no torque about any axis which is perpendicularly into the page on that line. And by the same argument, if I look at along the line of Fn2, which again I don't want to deal with, then, again, if I put my turning axis anywhere on this line, although Fn2 does exist, it causes no turning uh, axis around that. If I put where both of those lines cross, then I have no turning effect, no torque caused by Fn1, and I have no torque caused by Fn2, so it greatly simplifies my life. So I'm going to actually clean up my diagram a little bit. 
and I can get rid of all those but that is where I'm going to do my turning axis around so it's going to be in line with FN1 it's going to be in line with FN2 so yeah it's actually in the middle of a free space but that's where I'm choosing to do my turning axis and now what I say is oh um, 200 now let's see what I need to do here my line of 200 is there and I want that distance to go with my 200 it's the force times the perpendicular distance and that distance there is the same as the distance at the bottom and the distance at the bottom is the adjacent to the 60 and half my ladder my ladder is 8 meters long so this is 4 meters it's 4 meters because my weight is at the center of the ladder and that's the way that centers of gravity work so this is a 4 meter hypotenuse and this is a 60 meter degrees and I would like to find this horizontal distance between the turning axis and the 200 newton force so please notice I'm actually wanting this distance down here this distance up at the top but I'm doing the math for the same length which is actually positioned at the bottom and this would be this would be hypotenuse 4 cosine 60 and if I look at this turning axis and I look at the force that's tending to cause a counterclockwise rotation so that would be positive so there's my first torque Let's go to my second force, which is not ignorable. I can ignore FN2, but I can't ignore FF2. So I'm going to put down FF2. And here, if you look at this, I'm trying to find, let's do this in blue. I'm trying to find this distance here. because it's the distance between the turning axis and it's perpendicular to my force but I can find that distance by looking at my my triangle here and this is an opposite to my 60 degrees and now my hypotenuse is 8 meters because it's the full length of the ladder so this would be 8 sine 60 this is tending to cause a clockwise motion about my turning axis. It doesn't cause it, but it's tending to cause it. Clockwise torques are always called negative, and those two added together equal zero. So rearranging FF2 is equal to. 200 times 4 cosine 60 over 8 sine 60. At this point, it's just sums. FF2 is equal to. Now, if you're going to use a calculator to do a whole bunch of things like that, my advice is you, you do it nicely step by step. So I'm going to say 200 times and I'm going to say 4 equals times cosine 60. I'm, I've checked that I'm on degrees, and I am. Divided by 8 equals divided by sine 60 equals. And I'm getting 57.74. This is 57.74 newtons. I don't want to make a mistake just in my calculator because I forget to put parentheses in and stuff like that. And the classic is that if you say something divided by 8 sine 60, 
in some cases it will divide by 8 but multiply the whole thing by sine 60 so you've got to be a little bit careful with your calculator usage but there I have it I drew myself a nice clear diagram and the first thing I did was I made sure that I had added all external forces to the ladder onto my diagram and as, as is often the case I found there was a number of forces that I hadn't taken into account I basically picked my turning axis so that I could ignore in this case two of the unknown forces that I didn't care about that left me with only one unknown force but that was what I wanted to find out that was the subject of my question and then the rest was math I was careful to make sure that clockwise tending torques were negative and counterclockwise tending torques were given a positive sign and people sometimes find it hard when the force is way down here and the turning axis is way up there people sometimes find it hard to to see whether this is clockwise or counterclockwise tending so my advice is you kinda like you run the arrow or you run your finger along the direction of the of the force going past the turning axis and then it becomes clearer. But there we have it.